Let's go ahead and open the MMC now from our shortcut and you'll see I have the computer management snap-in and the Windows firewall with advanced security snap-on uh, snap-in. If we click on that we'll see an overview for that firewall. Just basic information is the firewall on, uh, is the profile active, that type of thing. Now there's a lot more we could do with this uh, within this screen and the more you work with firewalls the more you'll see that this is uh, more like a firewall that you might install for a server or a uh, rack mount black box type device. With this program we can configure inbound and outbound ports and rules according to the program and the port that we want to deal with. Also we can create customized rules for specialized programs. So let's show a couple of those things now. We'll click the plus sign to expand the Windows firewall and you'll see here we have inbound rules and outbound rules. It's important to understand the difference between the two. Outbound rules deal with when your computer is connecting to an outbound computer uh, to access information and it's when your computer uses an outbound port. And this is uh, the most common thing that you'll be doing if you're working at a client computer. Your computer will automatically open an outbound port to say a web server or a mail server or FTP server. Inbound rules are a little bit different though. That's when your computer is serving the information. That's when other computers on the network or on the internet are connecting into your computer to extract information. And that's when you have to be more careful and uh, make sure that your system is secure. So let's take a look at these now. We'll start with the inbound rules. And if we click on inbound rules, we'll get an entire list of all the programs that could possibly run on this computer and whether those programs are allowed or not allowed to uh, have other computers access them. Uh, I'm just going to scroll over here a little bit, make a little bit of room. Okay, and we'll see a couple things here. For example, here's an, an Adobe, a set of Adobe inbound rules. And they have a green check mark. That means that they are currently enabled. And we see here it says enabled yes. If we see a gray check mark, we know that it's disabled. So under the enabled column, it says no. Let's show another example of this. If we scroll down, and we'll scroll all the way down here to remote desktop, here we have an option that's grayed out and it says enabled no. So this is a disabled rule but we could enable it if we needed to and a profile is for public. Yet here's another remote desktop which is enabled and if you look at the profiles for these the one that's enabled is for the domain computers on this uh, on the domain or private meaning internal to your network. The one that's disabled is considered public and it usually means uh, computers coming from the internet. So it makes sense that we want to have that disabled. But let's say that I wanted someone that was external from this computer on the internet to have the ability to take control of this computer. Well, I could go ahead and enable this rule. And I would do that by right clicking it and just selecting enable rule. That's going to refresh the uh, screen, scroll down a little bit, and that'll make that green. And now both remote desktops are set to uh, enabled. We can also change the profile, we can change the users or computers that can connect to this specific program uh, and we can do that by double clicking the uh, rule and that will bring up the properties for that rule and uh, specify all the different uh, types of things that we want to do here. We can allow regular connections, only allow secure connections, or block the connections altogether. We can change the profiles. We can select a public profile, private, domain, or all three if we wanted to. We can select specific computers or users that can connect to this program. So pretty in-depth. You can't really do a lot of these things in the control panel version of the firewall. So I'm just going to cancel out of here. And uh, another thing is uh, you want to be careful with these programs every time and these uh, rules every time you open up or enable a rule, you're opening a port. And if we scroll down here, and scroll over, you'll see here the local port 3389. Well, that's the standard remote desktop protocol port 
that's used on a computer that's allowing uh, inbound connections so other computers can access that screen. So you got to watch for this. You want to make sure that uh, you're positive you want to have that port running. And if there's any other firewalls in, the, in, the, uh, in between you and the other computer that's trying to access the system, you may need to work with those as well. So there's an example of uh, inbound uh, rules and how to modify those. Let's show an example of an outbound rule. Click on outbound rules here and uh, we've got our whole list here. I'm going to go down to remote assistance, the other side of the whole remote desktop uh, world basically. So we'll go to remote assistance and I'm just going to drag some of these over here so it's a little easier to see. Okay. And for example we have remote assistance TCP out. Well generally if a computer is uh, looking for remote assistance you would either fill out an email or click on a link and that'll send out the remote assistance request to another computer that's external from yours. So this is more of an outbound type of thing that would happen. So there's an outbound rule that's associated with it. Then if the person uh, decides to help you, that's great. Usually it's a help desk person or some type of tech support person. So remote assistance TCP out. And you'll notice that we have two of these and there's a lot of different versions. I'm just using the TCP version right now. And they're both checkmarked in green, which means they are both enabled. And that's for the private and for uh, the domain profile. If we uh, scroll over here a little bit, expand this, you'll see we have the private and we have the domain and public profile. Well, it could be that we don't want a public connection for this outbound rule. We just want domain or private or, uh, or maybe just private and domain, but not public. Well, we could go ahead and double click on the remote assistance outbound rule and then go to advanced and deselect public altogether. Click OK and that refreshes the information and there we go. We have one for private and then we have one for domain. So you may want to restrict users uh, from asking for assistance outside of their computer and just restrict them to just the LAN or perhaps uh, just to the domain and not allow them access out to uh, the internet. There's a lot of rules here involved with remote assistance so it gets pretty in-depth but this is just one example. Okay finally I want to create a rule, a, a, a customized rule for a specialized program. What I want to do here is I want to run a TeamSpeak server and TeamSpeak is a, a program that's used by a lot of gamers and other types of uh, people who want to be able to talk to each other while they're working with other applications. And the TeamSpeak server would control all this communication. Uh, if I want to run the server, what I want to do is I want to create a custom inbound rule for this server program. So I'm going to go to Inbound Rules. And then over here in the Actions pane, we'll go to New Rule click that now and that brings up the new inbound rule wizard and uh, it asks you what type of rule you want to create you could do it by the program by the port or a customized rule and again this gets pretty in-depth when you deal with firewall so remember this is just a basic example I'm gonna select port click next and then it says does this rule apply to TCP or UDP well actually TeamSpeak uses both but the one I'm concerned with for now is UDP and that's for the voice portion and it's a specified port is going to be 8767. That's the inbound port that the server is going to use that all the other people that are utilizing TeamSpeak are going to connect to. Really their computers are going to connect to it automatically. So 8767, we'll click Next. And we have some options here. We can just simply allow the connection or allow it only if it's secure and authenticated. That would require additional IPsec uh, configuration. Or we could block the connection. I don't want to do that. I want to allow the connection, so I'll leave it as that and click Next. And it says, when does this rule apply? What profile are we dealing with here? And I'm going to leave it as all three, but you never know. You may want to just leave this as uh, private, a private network location known as a LAN. But I'm going to leave it as all three just in case I have people who are using TeamSpeak that are uh, in China or England or who knows where. So we'll leave it as that. We'll click Next. And we'll give this a name and we'll call it TeamSpeak description uh, server program rule and click finish and that creates the rule and if we scroll down here 
We'll see it here. Team speak. Any uh, profiles allowed, private, public, or domain. It's enabled. And if we keep scrolling over, we'll see the port, the inbound or local port that's being utilized, which is a UDP port 8767. And normally, people that are on the other side that are using TeamSpeak, uh, that are using the TeamSpeak client program, they will connect uh, with just about any port. The port is dynamically assigned to them, and that's their outbound port. So we leave the remote port as any. And right now I have allowed users as any, but I could reconfigure that if I wanted to. If I double click on this and bring up the properties, uh, we could modify that and select specific computers or users that are the only people that are allowed to connect. And this will kind of help to filter out uh, unwanted people or bots or what have you. So, uh, but I'm just going to cancel out of that. And there's a the basic uh, inbound rule. You could do the same thing for outbound rules, but generally uh, people that work with firewalls are more interested in creating and uh, working with the inbound rules because it's the inbound traffic that could uh, adversely affect your server. So that's about it. Um, we showed how to uh, work with the inbound rules, the outbound rules, showed a couple examples, and how to create a new rule.